Now let's have another session on parasitology. In the first session, we had a detailed discussion on the host part of the parasitic cycle. Now when I start talking about parasitic cycle or for that matter the concept of epidemiology, there is a significant triad in it. And what is this triad? There are three points in it. One is the parasite. Secondly, the host and thirdly, the environment and that forms a triad. How do we uh, understand this? Parasite is specific about the host. It needs a specific host, specific uh, conditions uh, and then it would spend a specific part of its life cycle in the particular host. Maybe a single host, that is a primary host, or maybe a secondary host, or a vector. But the very important part that needs to be considered here is the environment. Now what exactly do I mean by environment? Environment, there will be two parts of it. External environment and internal environment. External means under what temperature condition, in what season, humidity, or what all the external environmental conditions, whatever are required for the parasite to invade the host and stay there, multiply there, grow there. Internal environment, when I say I am talking about the internal conditions of the host, what body temperature, what physiological state, what secretions, all these have to be uh, specific for the parasite to invade it. So this triad of parasite, a host a environment, they would be forming an essential system of the epidemiological cycle. We have things that we need to consider here. See, in the uh, first session, I had mentioned about uh, the various types of parasites or various types of diseases on the basis of parasites like viral diseases examples could be influenza, rabies, HIV or the currently uh, spreading COVID that is coronavirus it's a SARS variety of virus severe acute respiratory syndrome kind of virus so these are all viral diseases Bacterial diseases, when I say I can talk about the cholera, typhoid, tuberculosis, leprosy, they are all bacterial diseases. Protozoan diseases could be amoebiasis, could be malaria, could be uh, leishmaniasis, trypanosomiasis, these are all protozoan diseases. Helminthic could be ascariasis, phyletiasis, teniasis and so on. Fungal diseases, the commonest one could be ringworm. It basically uh, affects the skin, but that's commonly called as a ringworm. That is classification of diseases on the basis of parasites. Now, parasitism, when I uh, start considering, broadly I can identify them as ectoparasites, endoparasites. The parasites which stay outside the body of host that is leech, takes, bugs, mites, they would be ectoparasites. Those which invade and stay inside the body of host, they would be endoparasites. Inside the body of host, when I say they could be intracellular or they could be extracellular or intercellular. Intracellular are those which invade not only the body of host but the cells like the plasmodial parasite, malarial parasite. Most of the bacteria, most of the viruses, they invade the cells and continue to grow there, cause the disease. While extracellular ones are those which invade the body of host but stay outside the cells, maybe in the lymphatic 
fluid, maybe in the body fluid or maybe in the blood or whatever. Most of the helianthic infections are this kind. Then there is a variety called mesoparasite, which is partially embedded in the body of host and partially stays outside the host. Example could be a parasitic coffee pore. It invades the body only partially, rest of its body stays outside the body of host. That is mesoparasite. Now that is classification on the basis of whether they are inside the body or outside the body. There is another way of classification. That is obligate and facultative. The parasite when it completely stays inside the body of host for entire life cycle it completes inside the body of host it's called as an obligate parasite it is completely dependent upon the host that's an obligate parasite whereas when it completes only part of its life cycle it is dependent on the host for a specific part of its life specific requirements like food or reproduction this kind of uh, process in its life is to be completed inside the body of host, then it's called as a facultative parasite. As I said, the malarial parasite could come in that. While amoebiasis, if I talk about it, it would come under obligate parasite because it can stay inside the body of host till the host is dead. Okay. That is obligate parasite. Then Parasitism, if I am talking about, then there are different categories in it. First one would be hyperparasitism. It's something in which one parasite stays on another parasite. That is, parasite on another parasite. Example, we can take uh, a lot of protozoans staying inside the helminths. Now, helminth is a parasite on maybe some vertebrate, and the protozoan would be a parasite on the helminth. So that is a classic example of hyperparasitism. Then there could be social parasitism, in which the parasite would be selecting social animals of the host. Ants, termites, uh, bumblebees, they could be the host on which the parasite would be surviving. So, social parasitism would be parasitism on the social animals. Host is a social animal. Then it could be kleptoparasitism. The word kleptos actually stands for a thief. So, a parasite stealing from another parasite that's a classic example of kleptoparasitism uh, the example can be given as uh, a cuckoo bee which lays its eggs into uh, slightly matured larval stages of maybe uh, different species under the same genus so when the larva matures, the eggs inside it, they have already hatched, small larvae have come out and they also have started developing. Then there is a concept of Adelpho parasitism. The word Adelpho stands for brother. So a parasite selecting another species or same species but different individual as the host. The example can be given as uh, a black fly in Garcia. In Garcia species you can see wherein the unmated female lays its eggs into a slightly advanced uh, larval stage of maybe the same species or a different species. Now uh, eggs hatch out into larvae, the larvae start growing, that's not the only part of it. 
these developing larvae would be responsible for development of sex of that uh, maturing larval stage. What, whether it develops into a male or a female would depend upon the larvae which have been released into it, which have been growing into it. So that is adelphoparasitism. Now, parasites, when I say, we have classified the parasitic invasion as the one which could stay restricted to one host or which could be transmitted from one host to another. That is non-communicable or communicable. That is a kind of characterization we have made. The communicable ones when we talk about transmission from one host to another. The transmitting factors, the transmitting agents could be uh, different kinds of vectors that is living organisms carrying uh, the parasite through their body or vehicles that is uh, the parasite getting transmitted through food, water, milk and so on or it could be uh, <clears throat> direct transmission that is through air, through uh, droplets, through uh, physical contact, that is a direct transmission. The coronavirus that we are currently talking about, it can be transmitted through droplets or it can be transmitted through direct contact. So it could be an example of direct transmission. Well, indirect transmission it involve, will involve all of these vectors, vehicles and so on. A detailed account of uh, the vector part of it we would have uh, maybe in the next session but still an introduction we can have as uh, biological vectors and mechanical vectors. Biological vectors are those which carry the parasite inside their body. As we have been talking about malarial parasite, the primary host is human being, the secondary host is mosquito. So mosquito would be the vector in which the parasite completes sexual part of its life cycle. Sexual reproduction it completes inside the mosquito and asexual uh, propagation takes place in the human beings. So this would be an example of biological vector. While mechanical vectors are those in which the parasite is carried through the uh, secondary host maybe, but there is no life cycle which is completed in its body. Typical example that we can talk about is housefly responsible for transmission of typhoid, Salmonella typhi. That parasite is carried through its legs or wings where it just sticks and gets transmitted to another host. There is no life cycle which is completed in the housefly. So that will be an example of mechanical vector. A few more details about vectors, vehicles and further transmission we would have in the next session. Keep watching the videos, like them, subscribe to them, share among your friends and family. Don't forget to give any feedback, suggestions, comments.